welcome back to another episode of the Whiskey Diaries. My name is Martin Lang. We are in a stunning distillery uh, live from Glengarsaw in Scotland, doing the Scotland tour, and this is one of part of our distilleries. Uh, this is a very, very special one because a couple of uh, things. Firstly, this distillery currently is closed. Uh, we were lucky enough to get a tour by uh, organized by Brown Foreman um, just to let us go through the distillery. Uh, they've been closed for about a year. Uh, they don't know when they're going to open yet, but this, they're definitely going to reopen again. Um, so I was here in 2019 and the distillery was fully working, but during the pandemic, uh, unfortunately, they closed down and they're just trying to do renovations and just trying to put it up to, to uh, just to work in again. The, the, the tour was done by Emma. Uh, she's one of the tour guys that works at, uh, at Glenronic Ben Riot King Glengarsaw. Uh, and she was kind enough to walk us through all the distillery, showed us everything, how everything is made, all was made until a year ago. I don't think they're going to change much, but the spirit is actually delicious and the distillery is stunning. Uh, you got to make it. Like if you ever come to Scotland, is, uh, to Dufftown or even Space Island Highlands, you got to make it out of your way to come here uh, because it's very, very special. So a little bit of history, as we said before, we're not doing a full, we're not covering a full, full history in this. We're focusing on what the distillery does, what the tour is about uh, and what you get for the distillery from the tour. Uh, so the main thing here is that was, uh, the, the distillery itself was created in 1875 by James Moyer uh, and it was the, the history of uh, Glengarsaw is that it actually has been shut for most of its history. Uh, in total uh, it has been closed for 50, uh, 50 to 70 years. Uh, they were closed from 1909 till the 1970s then they reopened and they closed for another 10 years and they reopened uh, and then eventually it got bought by, uh, uh, by Brown Foreman. So between 2004 and 2016 when Brown Foreman bought it, uh, it was run by Billy Walker. Billy Walker bought uh, originally first of all bought uh, uh, Ben Ryak, then Glenronach, and lastly Glen Gosso in 2015. And as you know, Billy Walker by now, uh, he loves to experiment with casks and doing all sorts of stuff with it. So we got to try some pretty, pretty amazing whiskies today that we were going to talk about it later on. The spirit itself, uh, obviously for the last 15 years or 20 years, it follows very much the same formula as Ben Ryak and Glen Gosso, uh, sorry, and Glenronach. Uh, because they're all sister um, uh, sister distilleries, but just to go through everything, we'll just we'll just go through all what they do. They have a mash tun uh, that is very it's exactly the same as Glen uh, Glenronic. It's made out of cast iron with a massive dome that is made out of copper. Uh, funny story is a couple of uh, I think it was a couple of months or doing last year they tried to steal it. They actually went inside the thing with a with a chainsaw just to tried to steal the copper from it and they got caught. So you can see marks of the of the of the mash tun trying to be ripped open. It's 106 years old uh, and basically it's just they use the same method as Glenronic and Ben Riken, which they a plague uh, sorry uh, a, a rake and blow as well which is basically they have a, a big things with hands basically that just turns on the barley while it's getting heated up with the water. Uh, this one only does three three waters in comparison to Mariah. Uh, they do 65 degrees, then they do 73 degrees and the final water is 35 degrees uh, just to clean it all off. Um, everything that is left over uh, gets taken either to the biomass plant or gives to the cattle farms. The washbacks is pretty straightforward. They have six washbacks two from stainless steel and from, uh, four from pine, uh, pine wood, which is pretty standard. The two stainless steel basically uh, was replacing the wooden ones in the 1970s. And in the 1970s, the wooden ones actually just, they need a replacement. And because this uh, distillery in the 70s was used for uh, blending, like most of the distilleries back in the day, uh, they decided not to do too much work and just put stainless steel instead of pine wood. Um, it doesn't change much of the character, uh, but basically uh, that's what they've done. Uh, after that, it's pretty standard, uh, similar to Ben Ryak and, and uh, Glenronic. They have a 60 hour uh, fermentation, producing about 8.5 to 9% ABV uh, wort. After that, it gets put into two stills that are actually 
huge. I didn't actually get the size of the stills, like many distill unlike many distilleries that they have the size of each still, we couldn't find out the, the, the actual volume of the still, but they're massive, they're way, way bigger. And it's only one, one wash still, one spirit still, actually really, really pretty stills, uh, but that's, that's it with, a, with an angle uh, line arm, which creates a heavy spirit. Now, talking about the spirit in itself, and this is gonna lead me to the tasting, Glengosar makes a really heavy new make, uh, like sweet, but not in a bad way. Um, it, it, it's actually a beautiful new make, but it's very, very different to what you would get from uh, uh, down, down space side or duff down and stuff. It's just a, a very unique uh, and very, very sweet new make, which is delicious. And by the time you actually drink it, it's, it's a really, really good whiskey. The distillery itself is actually 100 meters away from the coast. Yeah, I'm, right now I'm looking there and I can see the ocean. Uh, you will see in the videos that we took, you can actually, it takes it's a four minute walk to the beach. We had some beautiful Glengasa there, the revival while we were watching on the beach. We walk, uh, we walk up the, the hills and just look over the ocean. Uh, and today is a beautiful day as a matter of fact. It might not look like much, but apparently the wind and the rain here, it's non-stop every single day. So uh, Emma was mentioning that a lot of the cask and uh, all the warehouses are basically getting uh, smashed by the, by the salty wind every day. Similar to what you would get in Isla or an Orkney or the sky. So it produces a very, very salty uh, spirit, which is, to be honest, is delicious. What, what we tried today was actually incredible. Uh, now, basically, after they distill, they put it in barrels. They have been experimenting with a lot of barrels. We don't know what the future will hold, but at the moment, uh, it's a lot of sherry, uh, sherry maturation, wine casks, uh, American oak, and so on. Now, because the distillery is not in working order, uh, the, the, the tasting that we got done today is very unique. And I don't think it's gonna be available anytime soon. The whiskeys that we tried, the youngest one that we tried was 30 years old, and we went all the way to 47. And each individual whiskey was insane. As it's not working also, we couldn't purchase any of the uh, distillery only bottling or any special editions that we have been reviewing in previous distilleries. Uh, but Emma was kind enough to lend us one of the bottles that we did today for the tasting. Uh, that is, this is the last bottle that is available. I uh, will review it in a second, but just to go you through, uh, run you through the distillery tasting that we actually did and how incredible those whiskies were. And if you ever find them, this actually were for sale. Um, so if you can find them online, you, uh, you, yeah, they will be going for a fortune. But anyway, we got really, really lucky with this tool. Now, the first one that we tried was the standard 30 year old. Um, that is a 42% ABV, 384 bottles ever made, uh, sherry cask, and is a very, very sweet liquid like what the distillate is. Uh, it was delicious, it was great, but to be honest, this is what we got to try after, it just like makes, makes it look bad, which is a shame to say, because it's a beautiful 30 year old. The next one that we tried is the 41 year old, that is the one that we're gonna try here, so I'm gonna leave that later on. After that, we tried another 41 year old that was distilled in 1974 and bottled in 2015. Uh, this one was a Caribbean rum cask. Uh, after 41 years, this is, uh, these are all cask strengths straight from the cask. It got reduced to 40.8% ABV, so almost barely what you legally can bottle a, a whiskey, which is 37.5. Uh, so amazingly crazy sweet, like you can, you can almost taste the rum, insanely. It was awesome. Then the 42 year old, we tried from 1973 to, uh, and bottled in 2015. This one was a strange one, uh, not in flavor, but the, the, the cask, I never heard of this. This was a Masandra Aliatico Hot Hedge, which apparently is like a, a Ukraine slash, uh, what, northern, northern country type of red wine. Uh, again, insanely beautiful whiskey. Like I cannot express how sweet these whiskeys were. Like they were melting in your mouth. It's insane. So this was a 40% ABV. And then 40, the last one that it was, Again, incredible, 47 years old, uh, distilled in 1968 and bottled in 2016. This was one from a sherry puncheon, and this is actually the ABV uh, was actually higher, it was 46.6, which is very interesting 
considering that the previous, the 41 year old and the 42 year old, and this one in particular, were 40% ABV. So, really, really interesting. Uh, we got looked after so well and so spoiled that I just cannot even explain uh, like, like the experience that we had. So the next one that we're going to try, so, <laughs> we've got a little maintenance going around us, but that's okay. Uh, again, so this one is the 1975, distilled in 1975, bottled in uh, 2016, 41-year-old, 100% Sauternes Hogshed. All this rare cask was actually hand selected by the master distiller at the time, Billy Walker. Obviously, Billy Walker doesn't work in the distillery anymore because he's actually working at Craig Alecki. Craig Alecki. Uh, now he's owned by Brown Foreman, but this one's where one of the bottles uh, that we got to try. Um, this is borrowed by the distillery to us. We not we don't own this bottle, unfortunately. Uh, but they were kind enough to just let us uh, let us have a sip. Uh, I'm not trying to <laughs> get too greedy here, but I will drink all of this out of the bottle if I could. It's absolutely ridiculously good. Um, all you get from this is incredible amount of sweetness. Uh, a lot of sugar, a lot of trickle, vanilla, uh, and obviously all the sweetness that you get from Saturn's gas. For all those people that don't know what Saturn's is, it's a grape that gets attacked by a, a thing called the noble rot. The noble rot uh, makes the grape like kind of like shrinks to almost like a berry size and it's full of sugar. So it has a very low yield, but the wine lasts forever. It's one of the most expensive wines out there. They actually uh, found some in the Titanic and it was still delicious and you could still drink it. So they use those casks and they, they age it in there. And you can see the color here is like, like pitch black. It's like super brown. Um, so it's ridiculously good. Then after that, wow. That's literally like drinking a cocktail. If someone gives you this on a block of ice with a little bit of bitters, without anything, you would think that that's a cocktail. It almost feels like they added sugar to it. Obviously they haven't, this is an incredible whiskey. I cannot, I don't even know how to find this, but if you ever find a, <laughs> a 41 year old Glengasaw on Saturn's cast, make sure you grab it, because absolutely stunning. Anyway guys, uh, this is it from, from us, from Glengasaw. Unfortunately the distillery is not working at the moment, but they are planning to reopen it. They're not planning to sell it. They're not planning to mothball it or anything like that. They're just doing renovations and eventually will reopen. And I'm really looking forward to see what they can do with the whiskeys because it's unbelievable. Thank you very much for watching. Again, if you have any recommendations or you want to have any questions or anything in particular that you want us to do, let us know. We're happy to, to accommodate as much as we can. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next video. I'm going to go to the beach and keep drinking this whiskey because this is phenomenal. Uh, Slanjabar, and we'll see you next time.